Wow, what an honor. I've always wondered what this would feel like. Uh, so eight years ago, I got the worst career advice of my life. I had a friend tell me, Scott, don't worry about how much you like the work you're doing right now. It's all about just building your resume. And I'd just come back from uh, living in Spain for a while, and I joined this Fortune 500 company. I thought, this is fantastic. I'm going to have this big impact on the world and all these ideas. And within about two months, I noticed at about 10 a.m. every morning, I had this strange urge to want to slam my head through the monitor of my computer. I don't know if anyone's ever felt that. And I noticed <clears throat> pretty soon after that that the, all the competitors in our space had already automated my job role. And this is about, right about when I got this sage advice to build up my resume. Well, as I'm trying to figure out what, <laughs> as I'm trying to figure out what you know, two two story window I'm going to jump out of and you know, change things up, I read some altogether different advice from Warren Buffett, and he said, "Building, taking jobs to build up your resume, is the same as saving up sex for old age." <laughs> and I heard that, and that was all I needed. Within two weeks, I was out of there, and I left with one intention: to find something that I could screw up. That's how tough it was. I just wanted to have some type of an impact. It didn't matter what it was. And I found out pretty quickly after that that I wasn't alone. It turns out over 80% of the people around don't enjoy their work. I'm guessing this room is different, but that's the average that Deloitte has done with their studies. And so I wanted to find out what is it that sets these people apart, the people who do the passionate, world-changing work, they wake up inspired every day, and then these people, the other 80% who lead these lives of quiet desperation. And so I started to interview all these people doing this inspiring work, and I, I read books and, and did you know, case studies and 300 books altogether on purpose and career and all this, totally just self-immersion, really for the selfless reason of I wanted to find the work that I couldn't not do, what that was for me. But as I was doing this, more and more people started to ask me, Scott, you know, you're into this career thing. I don't really like my job. Can we sit down for lunch? I'd say, sure, but I would have to warn them because at this point, my quit rate was also 80%. Of the people I'd sit down with for lunch, 80% would quit their job within two months. And this is something, I was damn proud of this. And it wasn't that I had, it wasn't that I had anything special magic, it was that I would ask one simple question. It was, why are you doing the work that you're doing? And so often, their answer would be, well, because somebody told me I'm supposed to. And I realized that so many people around us are climbing their way up this ladder that someone tells them to climb and ends up being leaned up against the wrong wall, or no wall at all. And so the more time I spent around these people and saw this, this problem, I thought, what if we could create a community, a place where people could feel like they belonged and that it was OK to do things differently, to take the road less traveled, where that was encouraged and inspire people to change? And that later became what I now call Live Your Legend, which I'll explain in a little bit. But as we've done this, as I've made these discoveries, I noticed a framework of really three simple things that all these different passionate world changers have in common, whether you're you know, like a, a Steve Jobs, or if you're just, you know, the person who has the bakery down the street, but you, you, you're doing work that embodies who you are. I want to share those three with you, so we can use them as a lens for the rest of today and hopefully the rest of our life. The first part of this three-step passionate work framework is becoming a self-expert and understanding yourself. Because if you don't know what you're looking for, you're never going to find it. And the thing is that no one's going to do this for us. You know, there's no major in university on passion and purpose and career. I don't know how that's not a required double major, but don't even, don't even get me started on that. I mean, you spend more time picking out a dorm room TV set than you do you know, picking your major and your area of study. But the point is, it's on us to figure that out. And we need a, a framework. We need a way to navigate through this. And so the first step of our compass is finding what our unique strengths are. What are the Click on the link below the video. Click on the link below the video.